The Tribal Health and Human Services Department of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes is proud to present Good Medicine, a program dedicated to the wellness of the Flathead Nation. The mission is summarized quite simply, a healthier people, a stronger nation. We will strive to make Good Medicine a reliable source of ideas and information about health issues so that everyone can make informed decisions about their own lifestyle and health care. You will meet health professionals, tribal government and spiritual leaders, and interesting people from the tribal community discussing important health issues that profoundly affect us all. This is Good Medicine. My name is Larry Pitts. I'm your host. Today we are honored to have Lynn Hendrickson and Dennis Webster from Tribal Health. Um, They're both fitness specialists for the tribe and um, today's program will be directed towards exercise in the weight management program. To start with, Lynn is um, a certified ACE instructor, aerobic instructor for the tribe. She's also a certified fitness trainer. Um, Dennis is a certified fitness trainer for the tribe. Both of them have been schooled down at the um, North Dallas, Texas in the uh, Cooper Clinic. Um, Dennis is also a National Safety Council Back Power Certified Instructor, which means if you have a back problem, he can help instruct you on in how to strengthen your back. But today we're going to be talking about weight management and exercise. And so, both of you guys want to say hi to the world out there? Anybody want to say hello to? Not really? Okay. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> My kids. Both these guys yeah. are very, very nervous today, people, but like, they're going to do a great job. So, today, uh, Lynn, tell me, what is aerobic exercise since you're an aerobic instructor? It's where you exercise in your training heart rate, and to figure out your training heart rate, you start with a number 220 and minus your age, and depending on your age, you want to work in your training heart rate, and it's usually between 60 and 75 percent. Okay. Dennis, if a person is um, exercising and they get out of that, that training heart rate area that, um, that Lynn was just talking about, what, what might they expect would happen to them? Well, if you're on the low end of that, you're not getting your heart rate up enough to really get a benefit from the exercise that you're doing. And then if you're on the top end, then it's a little nervous because you're getting up toward your maximum heart rate, which uh, uh, is... is uh, Dangerous, basically. Yeah, I yeah mean, it can, can be. So you have to really watch it. And as you exercise, maybe from time to time, take a pulse rate and see how, you, how you're doing. Okay. Uh, Lynn, going back to you again now, on that, that rate, I was reading in a book one time that was saying that, you know, if you get up in that upper level, sometimes it, maybe you're burning more carbohydrates instead of fat calories. What, what would happen if that goes on? What, what are we talking about there? Well, if you get in the upper end, you would be burning more carbohydrates and you'd run out of energy faster because um, your muscles have the ability to only store so much and um, when you run out of carbohydrates in your muscles, you're gonna run out of steam. <laughs> they shut down, okay. Well, how is, on this weight management program, Dennis, you know, our target is to burn, obviously, is to burn fat. What is the best way to burn fat? Uh, what you have to do is exercise, uh, do an aerobic exercise, like uh, we have at our center, we have uh, treadmills and steppers and uh, uh, bicycles and what you do is get on there and then get your heart rate at between that 65 and 75 percent of maximum rate mm -hmm. and keep it there for an extended amount of time and then that's when you start to really uh, uh, burn calories and it'll, it'll have an effect up on your metabolism. Okay. So by chance, say I was overweight. I needed to be in the weight management program, and I came in and I I worked out really, really hard, and I got my my heart rate up to eighty percent of that. What would that do to me? I mean, could I achieve that, or w would I actually not be doing the right program? Um, if you're just starting out, I'd say that's a little too much. Mm -hmm. um, the more fit you are, the more your body would be able to handle working out that hard but you need to start um, slow and gradual. You don't have to um, really 
jump in with both feet, start out really slow because you want to um, be able to maintain it. What we're looking at is changing um, lifestyle, mm -hmm. where last, you know, for the rest of your life and not just for one or two weeks and you get burnt out and bored or feel like a failure and quit. So we're w looking for lifestyle changes. Yeah, when you, when you start slower, it's, it's more enjoyable too, you know. If you come in and really are hurting when you leave, uh, you don't want to come back. So if you just ease into it, it's, it's going to be a lot better for you keeping with it and not giving up. So you mean I'm not going to get fit and lose all my weight in two to three weeks? No. no. <laughs> they say you didn't gain it overnight. You're not going to lose it overnight. You want to make slow, gradual improvements. They say um, on the weight loss, no more than two pounds a week. And the slower you go, the more likely you're going to stick with your program. And you need to find something that you enjoy. If you don't enjoy the bike, you're not going to stick with it. So you really need to find something that you enjoy so um, you will stick with it. One, one of the things I think that helps you enjoy enjoy uh, getting into shape is doing different exercises. If you come in with the idea that you're only going to do six, seven, eight exercises in the same ones and you, you're going to keep repeating that, it wears on you psychologically and I think what you need to do is come in with an open mind and want to know a lot of different exercise and always uh, keep uh, the muscles alert by uh, changing exercises a lot. They call that cross training because mm -hmm. if you do the same thing over and over your muscles and your body gets efficient at it and then you won't burn as many calories. Mm -hmm. So if you always cross train, fool your body with um, doing different exercises, it will help, like Dennis said, keep your uh, motivation and help your training program. All right. Um, I keep hearing that, um, you know, when people, in fact, I gave a talk this morning, one of the complaints I heard about exercise is people said, well, I was so sore after the first time I, I worked out, I didn't want to go back. Are there any remedies for that? Anything we can do about that, that they don't get so sore? I would say start real slow. Yeah. Start real slow um, so you don't get that sore mm -hmm. that you don't want to come back. How about drinking? Is, is I was going to say one thing that I've, I've noticed that if you drink a lot of water while you're working out, it just seems like it uh, keeps you from getting sore. And there are uh, there's some herbal things that you can do uh, that can help with that too. But uh, mostly I tell uh, people in the center just to drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So that's why I see these people running around all over the reservation with these water bottles from uh, the tribal fitness centers. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that one of the purposes of those? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Encourage people to drink water. You need at least eight glasses a day. A normal person, if you're overweight, you need extra water. Okay. So actually the larger frame, maybe you are the larger person, you probably would need more water? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, the other thing is, I, as I go in these fitness centers, I, I always notice that there's a lot of workout equipment, you know, some weight type of stuff. Um, what's important about resistance training? Isn't that what it's called? Yes. The importance is uh, with resistance training is it builds up your muscle mass, and starting around the age of 30, we lose, can lose up to a half a pound of muscle a year and gain up to a pound and a half of fat. So if you add resistance training, what weightlifting is called, resistance training, and you can do that with Dyna balls, I mean Dyna bands, it's the bands, resistance bands. You can use your own body weight. You can use the machines or free weights. You can build um, your muscle mass up, and the more muscle mass you have, the more calories you burn even at rest. So um, the weight training goes um, hand in hand with the aerobics, because aerobics will work on your heart, mm -hmm. healthy heart, and the weights will help you build the muscle mass so you burn more calories. Wow, so it's more efficient. So, so Dennis, what do you think about that as far as, what do you guys are seeing in your, in your centers as far as, are people coming out, are they using the equipment, and, and are they seeing results? What kind of results are we seeing? Um, I think we're seeing a lot of good results. Uh, we have at the center in Ronan, we have a core group that have stayed with it for quite a while now, and they just really enjoy it. They they hardly miss, uh, you know, a lot of them are like uh, four and five times a week. And uh, 
They just, uh, they just love the energy that it's uh, given them and all sorts of comments about how uh, uh, certain activities that used to kind of be hard on their shoulders or different parts of their body, now it's a lot easier. So they really see results if they stay with it. Mm -hmm. So people actually see more than just weight management with this stuff. They're starting to see, are they seeing a more positive, a positive outlook in their life? Are they mentally getting sharper? Do you see that? Um, do they feel that there's a change in those areas? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of comments about how they, they feel a lot more confident. Uh, they, that comes from when you, when you know you've uh, given enough of uh, your own discipline to get in there, you just, it has to affect you in whatever you do, mm -hmm. you know, so. I think the hardest part is, like Dennis said, getting motivated to go. I think half the job is just getting there. <laughs> Once you get there and then get into the routine, it makes it easier and it makes you feel good. I'd like to say we have some people down at the fitness center. One guy in particular, he has over 800 exercises in. He comes in almost every day. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say his name. <laughs> Cliff Johnson, he does a great job. He's a diabetic and he comes in five days a week. He's mm -hmm. doing a great job. Do you see, you know, in your center, since both of you have been talking about your centers quite a bit, do people do better coming in on them by themselves or if they have sort of a time when they come and they, they have sort of a fellowship there, I mean a partnership, it, it, which works out better? I think um, working with the people, it's easier if you have like a buddy to um, motivate you. Maybe you're not into it that day and um, your friend, your support system will call you up and say, you remember we're supposed to go to the gym today? And I think um, people are more successful when they have a, an exercise partner or person to support them while they're exercising. I really agree with that, yeah. And uh, one of the things I see is that uh, it becomes kind of a social thing when you come in yeah. to work out. So people will come out and they'll have routines. You know, they'll go over and read the paper. They'll grab the paper, get on the bike, and be, you know, catch up on the news in the morning. Or we have the TV on, and and uh, you know, sometimes there's some outrageous programs on. Everybody's <laughs> making comments about it and stuff. And uh, there's magazines to to read, fitness magazines, other magazines not to do with fitness, but. Uh, there's just things that make it where it's uh, kind of a, a neat place to get a feeling of, uh, of that when you come in. So. so that's where those cookies come from on your desk when I come <laughs> in sometimes, huh? Yeah, more cookies the better. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> low fat. I better watch, yeah, really. Low fat really, cookies, low fat. <laughs> low fat cookies, all right. Uh, I mean, it's always fun to walk into Dennis's Center. It seems like the... the um, the more mature group that like to cook, like to give Dennis the little freebies there, so. Yeah. It's nice. It's hard over the holidays, yeah. <laughs> Very hard. How often does a person need to work out, especially aerobically, um, to start to see some results in their life? Um, what, what do the reports say about that? The Surgeon General's report that was out earlier this year recommends that people, um, they should work out almost daily, aerobically. Okay, <laughs> and um, depending on your fitness level, I'd recommend um, if you want to start a program to call one of the fitness centers and make an appointment. Um, we we'll take you through an evaluation, and um, from the evaluation, we can determine how often you should start out aerobically. Mm -hmm. So, since you brought that up, what days of the week are you open up in San Ignatius, Lynn, and what are your hours? Okay, we're open Monday through Thursday from 6 a.m. till 9 in the evening. We also have um, the gym in the community center if you like to play ball, and we have the fitness center. On Friday, we're open from 6 till 4.30 in the evening. We're open Sunday from 10 until 2. Okay. And what is the phone number there? Our phone number down at the fitness center is 745-4242. Okay, and Dennis, what about Ronan? What are your hours in Ronan? Yeah, uh, our hours are Monday through Friday. We're open from 7 in the morning till 8 at night. And then on Saturday, we're open from uh, noon until 5 o'clock. And you got a phone number for us? And the number 676-0138. 0138. All right. Well, we're going to take a break right here for our segment that we call Let's Ask Marjorie. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes to finish up this interview. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
In this segment of Let's Ask Marjorie, today, Marjorie, we have the question that came into us is, Marjorie, we've heard about talk around the reservation communities that not every um, community is receiving their fair share of, of the health care. Is that true? And uh, what are we going to do about that? Well, <laughs> excuse me, according to the, the statistics that we have on the services that we provided last year, that there needs to be additional services in Hot Springs and Dixon and Arley. And so um, uh, we've talked to Joe Dupuy, the tribal administrator, and he has requested that we come up with a plan to put some of the service providers out into these communities at least on a once a month basis or on some type of um, a system. And so it's very important for us to have some input from the people in those communities about what kind of services they want brought out. And if it's if there's some way that we can do that, we'll make an effort to do that. But we need some input right now. But in the next few months, um, we're going to expand the services so that the providers do go out to Arley, Hot Springs, Dixon. We're providing services now in Elmo, Polson, Ronan, and St. Ignatius. And so um, it needs to be a little more equal. All right, so, so you're getting equality across the whole reservation. Right, that's what we're trying to do. All right, thank you, Marjorie. And for those of you out there in TV land, um, what we're trying to do with this segment of our program is we would like you to write into Tribal Health with a question for Marjorie. And if you, your question is chosen for that week, we will then allow you to come on and ask the question. Or if you would rather not, then I will ask that question. So the address will be at the end of the, end of the program today. So thank you for your time. Welcome back from the Let's Ask Marjorie segment of our program. We are back with Dennis Webster. As you may notice, um, Lynn is not with us. Um, she had a prior engagement, engagement that she had to run off to. It was called her stack class. She did say to say, hello, stack class. And so we're going to pass that message on. And um, Dennis, it's you and me now. So let's get into some of the finer points, I guess, of the weight management program with aerobic exercise. Um, You've been involved with this process for what, about six months now, the yeah. weight management? Yeah. And uh, have you really seen um, with the, when the people are doing this three-prong approach where they do exercise, they watch their diet, and they are taking the medications, are they seeing some results? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, there's been times when I, and uh, talking to people that are on it, and we just get to really being honest, and they might say, oh yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm working out, but I really am not uh, keeping track of what I'm eating and I'm binging and that. And, and, and that might be a reason why they're not getting results. But when they come in and they're uh, working all, uh, all the phases of it, uh, they see the results. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take a while and it all comes into their commitment to it. You know, some people come in and uh, they'll definitely say, I'm going to be in here. Uh, three to three to five times a week, and they hit it hard, and and uh, they want to see the results. And other people are, are a little bit more nervous about it, and they they're going to say, "Well, can I come in once or twice a week?" Well, if you do that, you probably won't see see the results. So I try to encourage them to come in at least three times a week. Mm -hmm. Now, does, but that's probably the same with people just working out regularly, isn't it? Yeah. As far as yeah, I think if you really want to see good results, you come in you come in more often, and once you get into nice shape, then you can get down to uh, going back to maybe three times a week and just maintaining a nice a nice fitness level. Mm -hmm. But to, if you really want to see, see it, you got to get after it. You know, last week and and the week before, we we've addressed this same issue. We've talked about the you know weight management. We've talked about the nutrition. And I guess the thing that, you know, we were talking about last week, I was, I think I directed the question to Paul Coates, and that was a fact that, you know, we're into this microwave age that everything is quick and everything is fast, you know, yet the weight management does take time. And how do you see, can people come in and work out real quick and get the benefit that they're after? Or do they need to put actually some more time into it? Do they have make priorities, I guess? You mean that? Uh the, the amount of time, well, yeah. I, I usually tell them that they can get a nice workout in an hour's time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can do some aerobics, they can do some uh, weight training, 
They can uh, then put a little bit of time maybe on uh, doing some ab exercises or some flexibility, uh, you know, some stretches. Mm -hmm. And in an hour's time, you can get a nice workout. Okay. So there needs, needs to be a little bit of commitment, I guess. Yeah. So, yep. yep. Okay. Now, you know, we were talking at the beginning of the program when I, when I introduced you and I, I put your titles out there, you know, this back power program that you're certified in that. Is weight management, does that have anything to do with our, with our backs? Oh, definitely, yeah. Once you uh, uh, lessen up on the joints, all that extra weight that you're carrying around, yeah, they just, uh, they really like it. You know, so, uh, yeah, that's some of the comments that have been made is that, uh, yeah, my knees don't nearly hurt as much here, you know, as before. My hips feel a lot in that area, feel a lot better now that I've lost some weight. and. So yeah, uh, uh, one thing, uh, in, I guess for everybody, but it's that in the ab region, if you're, if you're carrying the, uh, some weight there, it is re definitely going to put some tension on your, on your back. So what you need to do is do some strengthening, and then you also need to do the flexibility so you have, have the right thing, the right proportion going on that. You know, it's, it's amazing as we talk, as I've gone through these other programs on this, it's balance. Yeah. You know, it seems like our whole life is getting ourselves back into balance. And, um, you know, from, from coming into your, your center, it seems like you guys are doing a great job. Um, do some people feel threatened maybe coming into a workout facility and they, they have the wrong ideas? They come in, they're thinking that people are going to look at them as they shouldn't be here? Or Yeah, I definitely think, yeah, that, that's something that you have to just get comfortable with because... In our center, we have a lot of mirrors, mm -hmm. and the mirrors are to, there for you to do exercises and, and make sure you're doing them right. And uh, for a lot of people, when you're a little uh, uh, conscious about things, that's, that's kind of an intimidating factor just to get over. So it's just a matter of coming in and getting relaxed with the surroundings. And uh, yeah, for a lot of people, you know, a lot of people have uh, been athletes or, or done a lot of activities where they've done a lot of, of uh, weight training and that. So they come in and they have a, it's a, it's a different attitude, you know, they really get after it. But it's a matter of them, a person who may not be like that, just to come in and just do what you can do and uh, everybody's really helpful to each other. You know, something else I've noticed in the centers, I guess, is all the free weights seem to be on one end of the building where the aerobic things seem to be on the other. Is there a reason for that? Is that, is, is that can keep the intimidation factor down maybe or? Yeah, I think it, I think it helps. Mm -hmm. You know, some of our, the more, uh, maybe uh, a lot of times people get the idea that if you have a fitness center, there's going to be a lot of grunting and a lot of heavy weights and stuff. and. And uh, in some cases, there might be some of that. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, most people are just trying to uh, tone up. They're not looking at creating a real large muscle, and just having muscles that uh, do whatever they want to do. Do mm -hmm. so. Uh, well, Dennis, I mean, you look pretty fit to me, you know, and uh, I knew you at a time when you maybe you were probably about 20 pounds heavier than this. What have you done to make a difference in your life? I think I've made, uh, since I've been working for uh, the health department, I think I've made an effort to try to try to watch uh, what I, a little bit more what I eat and I, and of course I work out a lot and uh, so yeah, I've had to, I've, I feel good about discipline I've put in my own life. Has this worked for your family as well? I mean, now that, I mean, maybe you're a role model to some of the rest of your family. Is, do you see that starting to have an effect with those around you? Yeah, but I'll, we've always had a family that we like to do things. And, uh, and uh, Lenny, who's in middle school, is very active. And, and Greg has always been very active. Bonnie, same way. We do things. And it's, it's, uh, it's fun to be able to. Uh, health is a nice gift that we have. So. So your family actually has received some wonderful benefits from this then? I think so. Oh, yeah. That's pretty awesome. And can this happen to other families? Oh, yeah. You yeah. say your family isn't yeah. this oh, special yeah. family, this oh, can't no happen way. to Yeah, and, and that's kind of neat because we do see a lot of different families on the res here that are coming in, and it, it's, it's really neat to see three or four people in the same family working out together. And it's fun. So weight management, you know, 
is, is pointed at certain things and yet the overflow, I mean, it just umbrellas over on so many other factors, you know. Yeah. Th that can be a real blessing, I think, upon the reservation, within the reservation. Um, is there anything that you'd like to, you know, to just to talk about just for a minute, Dennis, that, you know, where your heart is in your program, what you would like to see as far as how more people could come and use your facility? Yeah, I definitely think that we, uh, we need, I'd like to see more people come and use it, and I would like to see, you know, maybe farther down the road an expansion of what we have, but, you know, what we have now is, is a real nice facility. Mm -hmm. There's plenty to do in it. You can see a lot of results, and uh, but it's just to come down and uh, just try it out. And if you can hang in there for two to three weeks and get that habit going, of I think you'll you know mm -hmm. come back and enjoy it. So now your hours are from seven in the morning till eight at night. What hours are you there, Dennis? Yourself physically? Uh, I'm there from seven till three thirty. And then uh, have Mary Brown, who's a high school student. She comes in from 3.30 to 5. Mm -hmm. And then Casey Hawkins comes in from 5 to 8, so we have it covered with. All right. So if you really want to see Dennis Webster in the Ronan Center, you come in from 7 to 3.30. And Dennis, I just want to thank you for coming on my show today. And on the good medicine, you've made it a better program. And for those of you out in the TV world, come and use our facilities. And Tune in to see us tonight at 6 o'clock, which is Wednesday, and tomorrow at noon, Thursdays. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in the future. And have a good day now. Thank you. Good Medicine is your program. We hope you watch this and subsequent programs to stay informed about your health care. And we'd like to hear from you about how we're doing. Please direct any comments or suggestions you have to us. You can reach us at 